is Tyler Blake. This is Mobile Wars, the rise of cross-platform apps. So first, I want to say just thank you to all the sponsors that we have here. Um, this conference couldn't happen without them, even even with the circumstances of, of this year. So I know a lot of you all are probably asking <laughs> yourself this question, so i can tell you a little bit about me. Um, I'm a lead mobile developer at Focused Apps in Louisville, Kentucky. I am an author on nativescripting.com and an open source contributor for NativeScript and React Native. So let's talk about what this talk is about. Uh, we're going to talk about what a cross-platform mobile app is, what are some popular frameworks or options for you to use, why you might go cross-platform, how do they compare, which one you should use next. So what is a cross-platform mobile app? You can see here this diagram taken from NativeScript's website. You write your code once and you're able to have, in this case, we're going to create a button using either NativeScript's XML, Angular, or Vue syntax, and it's going to get transpiled at runtime on the, on the device. So if it runs on an iPhone or an Apple device, you'll get a UI button, and if it runs on Android, you'll get an Android widget button. Most cross-platform cross -platform frameworks can also create desktop or web apps as well. So let's talk about some popular frameworks. React Native, obviously this is a huge one lately. It was released in March of 2015. It's built by Facebook, uses React. It transpiles or its code to native at runtime. So it's not compiled, but it, uh, it uses a bridge to convert its native APIs uh, from your JavaScript code or your React code. Flutter, released in 2018, uh, built by Google, uses Dart and is compiled to native code. So Dart is a is Java-like, and it it gets compiled to native code. Native Script is released in 2015, built by Progress, and recently uh, transferred ownership to In Studio. Uh, with that, you can use TypeScript, JavaScript, Angular, Vue, or React. It gets transpiled, like I said, with React Native at runtime. And you have direct, NativeScript's big thing is you have direct access to those native APIs from your JavaScript code. This gives you day one support. So what this means is that if iOS 14 comes out, the, the, the day iOS 14 comes out and iOS 14's SDK is available, to developers, you can start using and calling into those native APIs day of release. Um, things like React Native, you have to have a bridge written to convert your JavaScript code to the native code. Can still happen super fast, and I think even some, there is some things I've seen that said that it does do day one support. You're just reliant upon somebody from the community or somebody from the, the React Native team to create that bridge for you to use. Ionic was released in 2013 by Drifty. And with that, you can use JavaScript, TypeScript, Angular, Vue, or React as well. Uh, you get your native API access through Cordova or Capacitor plugs, plugins. So previously was Cordova. Now they have kind of a side-by-side -side of Cordova and Capacitor, but the plan is to remove Cordova, I believe, in the long term and just use Capacitor. Note here that soon you will be able to access native APIs with NativeScript. Um, at Ionicomp, uh, it was announced that NativeScript was working with the Ionic team uh, to bring NativeScript to Ionic. So now you can't really think too much about NativeScript and Ionic being competitors because now the push is that NativeScript is something you can use anywhere to, to get access to native APIs through JavaScript, which is a, a super cool thing. So why cross-platform? First would be savings. Um, you're gonna save money because developers can handle more projects. 
Um, you're going to reduce training costs because, uh, like we'll see in, in the next future slides, developers will be able to leverage their existing web knowledge. You'll need less developers. This kind of goes hand in hand with the first point there. Um, me as, as a mobile developer can write an Android and iOS app simultaneously. So it's not, even though there is some sort of a delay, you know, takes extra time to, to kind of write specific things for iOS or specific things for Android, you're still, there's still a big time savings there. Faster development times, this again goes hand in hand. You can use your web knowledge, so your startup time. So if you bring a new developer onto the team and you need them to work in, in a mobile app space, if you're using a hybrid or cross-platform framework, they'll have a ramp up time, but it won't be near as, as long or as steep of a learning curve as if they were trying to do Swift or Java, Kotlin, Objective-C, et cetera. Again, you're gonna have that reduced training time. Consistency, so this is a big one. I hear a lot of times clients will often want, oh, well, this button doesn't look like the iOS button or this iOS component doesn't, isn't shown on Android. And a lot of that's because depending on what framework you use, you could have out of the box native UI components and then be able to add third-party libraries like material design you could add that to ios or maybe something like flutter comes out of the box with its own ui components so everything will match across the board whether you're on android device or an iphone or ios device but there are libraries that will let you show native ui components so it either it either happens uh, usually either one way or the other. So either it'll come out of the box with UI components and you can add third parties to make a match across platforms or it will match across platforms out of the box and then you'll have the ability to show native components later. And that's just what this bullet point, these two bullet points say is basically that some come out of the box UI, but you have option to add um, custom components that will match or they come out of the box with those custom components and then you can add native later. Performance. So nowadays cross-platform apps perform really well. Um, some even state native performance. I know a lot of you all are thinking, how's that possible? Um, I do wanna, do wanna have a note here that native apps will always be more performant than hybrid apps, I believe. I mean, maybe hybrid will get there to a, a certain point, but there's always going to be some sort of latency or lag in the apps. Now, don't get that confused. Things like native script and react native can run at 60 FPS, which is the native, the native performance for an iPhone or an Android. You're not going to notice in most business apps, you're not going to notice the, the performance issues or hits hits that you, that you might have if you were doing hybrid versus native. The only real times you're going to have is super intensive uh, graphics processes. So if you're building a, a game, for example, probably best if you're doing a, a game with a bunch of graphics, do that in Swift or Java or Kotlin. But if you're doing a, like a line of business app, I've even done a built app that does 3D rendering and it performs pretty flawlessly. I mean, we don't really notice a difference between that and the native counterpart to that app that was written in Swift. So the performance, very marginal. Would you ever, would there ever be a difference? And you wouldn't notice it unless if you were doing super intensive graphic stuff, games, etc. A lot of animations and everything going on at the time. There is an app out there um, built by the in-studio guys with native script called Sweet. And it has a ton of animations and they're that as far as I know, they're not seeing any issues with that. So even, even an app with a ton of animations can handle being run in native script or react native. I'm sure, uh, maintenance. So apps can usually then be supported by one to two developers. Like I said, if, if I can work on an iOS and an Android app simultaneously, I can usually manage iOS and Android app, right? The same app, but both builds I can manage 
by myself. Sometimes that's, you know, easier said than done. Most time, if you find a bug, unless if it's a weird outlying bug where it only affects, uh, you know, only if affecting a certain user on a certain platform and maybe even only certain models of phones, usually your fixes are going to be logic based, right? Your bugs are going to be logic based. And when you fix those in iOS, you'll be also fixing them in Android. Uh, web developers can help in a pinch. So since we are using, in the most cases, right, Flutter is, is the exception here. Most of them use web libraries, JavaScript, you know, web, uh, web languages. So if you have web developers that are available to you, that they can help you out in a pinch if you need to get uh, something fixed really quick or get a build out, your, your tight deadline, web knowledge will help you. You can reuse web resources. So most frameworks, since most frameworks use JavaScript, you can use third-party JavaScript libraries. Um, NPM packages, most all NPM packages for your web JavaScript libraries will work in these hybrid apps, uh, hybrid app frameworks. There are some caveats, sorry. If you have an NPM package that is reliant on the DOM, typically that will not work in a hybrid mobile framework. There are some that will have a bridge. Um, so there may be a companion app that will convert that DOM reliant um, package to use maybe the, to reference the canvas instead of the DOM and then could make it work. But out of the box, most of the time, if something refers to the window or, or any of these DOM uh, APIs, you won't have those in the hybrid frameworks and they won't work. So how do they compare? So first, I think the important one to talk about is speed to learn. So the, the fine print on this is that this graph is going to assume that you already know Angular or React. Obviously, if you know React already, React Native, you're going to be able to pick up super fast. If you uh, Dart, not assuming anybody knows Dart yet because it's its own framework or language, and as far as I know, it's I'm not sure what else it's used for. I know it was init initially intended for um, kind of like a JavaScript replacement. Now it's kind of specific to Flutter. Dart languages, so it's not incredibly difficult to pick up. If you have like Java or C sharp background, you'll um, I think you'll be able to pick it up pretty well. Native script, if you know Angular, or if you, even if you know React or Vue, any of these, you'll be able to pick up Native script pretty quick. Uh, all you really need to learn, and this is probably the same for um, React Native. All you really need to learn is the UI layer. So in NativeScript, all the code behind, so in an Angular uh, project with NativeScript, you'll have components and services. That code is exactly the same as it would be in an Angular web project. The only difference is the UI that the user sees is written in a NativeScript markup, similar to React Native. All your backend stuff is gonna be, it's gonna look and, and be the exact same as React, just your UI layer is gonna be different. Um, and Ionic, obviously with Ionic, you are building an Angular web app and then you're going to convert it to a mobile app. So if you already know Angular, very little loss you would lose there or time you would have to spend learning that. Third party support. Um, so this is kind of a hot topic because some frameworks tout that they have, you know, much, much more support, but from what I've seen, React Native has pretty decent support. Flutter, not as much as React Native. Also, though, if you remember back to our, our first slides, Flutter is only, what, going on two years now old, and React Native's been out a couple more years more than that. So you'll see that kind of the general vibe right now is Flutter is hotter than native, uh, React Native, but because React Native has been out longer. There's more jobs, more third-party support, all that good stuff for React Native over Flutter. So React Native, pretty good amount of support out there. Flutter, 
a little bit less um, native script even even less than that and that's uh, tough for me to say I've I've worked a lot with native script use it professionally we have multiple apps out on the App Store in native script and we have one going out to the App Store very soon in react native so I have experience building both and uh, the third sorry, the third party support is there it feels more natural with react native just to give you a little bit more of a background react native a lot of the stuff I've worked with and stuff has been from the react native team or the expo team whereas with native script most of it is going to be community uh, community driven plugins and third-party libraries that you'd be using although with the new change in ownership of native script the in studio team is doing a really good job of publishing updates to community plugins that were worked on and they're kind of taking them under their wing and supporting them so obviously that is very good and ionic it's been out for a while a lot of people know ionic and gone through it so it's got a lot of third-party support as far as i know popularity so we kind of kind of talked about that just a moment ago but I'll, I'll go on again so if we look at overall react native is more popular than flutter if you're looking at job market if you're looking at documentation third-party support forums like right all that stuff react native has more flutter a little bit less than that native script less than everybody else in this uh, graph and then ionic somewhere in the middle not super hot like react native or flutter but also not kind of at the bottom like native script um, but if we look at the recent trend flutter is much more popular and much hotter right now than react native is the only difference is react native had a few more years to build up that kind of popularity or jobs and stuff like that performance uh, this is always always a hot topic um, anytime there's anything written out on Twitter about you know native script or react native there's always a tons of people that come and say it's not native it's not performant we have multiple production apps out there I've seen multiple production production apps out there with hybrid frameworks it's fine you wouldn't notice it um, I'm sure someone out there has even done some testing to show how far you could push some of these hybrid frameworks before you would really start seeing those hits and comparing them to a native how how bad is it really I'm, I'm I'd be curious to see but react native the performance is going to be pretty good flutter the performance flutter compared to the other three is going to be even better I believe with it being compiled to native um, it's going to be like I said it's going to be uh, more performant native script I put even with react native there have been some blog posts Airbnb I think was one of them who were using react native had performance issues and had to adjust either they had to drop react native and go full native which I believe is what they did or switch to another framework as far as I can remember I think they went full native I also read recently that that um, so that was two years ago I believe last year react native revamped their whole list view is a it was a problem with the list view performance as far as I, I read last year react native actually redid their whole list view component and made their performance there a lot better so if that had been in in time maybe Airbnb would still be using that but as far as I know they switched off performance issues with their list view and went to native rather than react native and then ionic i will be honest most of my experience is with react native and native script so i can't speak super strongly about flutter or ionic in this sense general vibe i get from ionic in the community is that it's just not as performant as a mobile app compared to the other frameworks but like i said i know ionic got a huge revamp in the past year that performance is likely to be there capacitor is probably helping out a lot and you probably wouldn't notice in a, in a production app the only limits you may have is with the way ionic is built 
performance may be there, but maybe you would have trouble getting to native APIs or access to device functionality that you wouldn't have problems with if you went React Native, Flutter, or NativeScript. So now let's talk about that uh, access to native APIs. So React Native, you're gonna have a bridge written in uh, Objective-C to convert your JavaScript code into, or convert your Objective-C code into JavaScript, which then you could use the JavaScript code that would call into the native code. Flutter, since it's gonna be compiled, you're gonna have access to all the, all the APIs straight from your code editor. And because Dart is its own language built for this, um, you're gonna have, I think you're gonna have really rich um, IntelliSense in your editor to hit those native APIs. I know for me, coming from a web background for a few years and then jumping into uh, mobile development, I went straight into NativeScript. I had dabbled in NativeScript a little bit and could use NativeScript. The problem is whenever we started getting complicated uh, requests from our client, right? they wanted um, richer, uh, feedback or functionality in the mobile apps, we needed um, we needed to tap into those native APIs. And coming from a web background, I had no iOS or Android experience. So getting to those native APIs um, was tough for me. There are ways that you can add um, type definitions. So you'll have access to all those native APIs. All the IntelliSense pop-ups will be there that will probably come, that will be out of the box for Flutter. You'll have to do some configuring just a little bit for native script free to get that functionality. And I'm not 100% sure about React Native. I know in the Expo workflow, so with React Native, uh, just to give a little bit more of a background, with React Native, you have two kind of workflows. There's an Expo uh, workflow, which basically hides all of your native stuff from you. So you, you just have your JavaScript code and it handles all, all the iOS and Android stuff kind of in the background for you just to make it easier for you to get started writing your apps. You can eject from Expo and then you would have your iOS and Android folders with, the, with uh, all your assets and everything would be inside of your React Native project. And then I'm sure you would probably have to do some configuring like with NativeScript to pull in those types to your IDE, right? Whether you're using VS Code or WebStorm or whatever you prefer to use. With Flutter, you're gonna use um, Android Studio and you're, you're gonna get all those native API uh, IntelliSenses straight away. Ionic, as far as I know, the access to native APIs is there via plugins. Those were Cordova at one point. Now they're moving towards Capacitor. So that's gonna be just a little bit worse because you're just super reliant on those on those uh, those plugins to be maintained and developed. The last uh, bar here I kind of added is a is a combo of native script and ionic. So like I said earlier, ionic the ionic team and the native script team are working together to bring native script to ionic not to um the intent isn't to kill off capacitor the capacitor will still be a thing will still be used no no worry there they want to they want to make like a partnership to make capacitor even better because then if they can tie native script into capacitor not only will you have the plugin support through capacitor but you also be able to reach into the native apis as you want using native script which is going to be super powerful hoping for that to come later this year, I believe is when uh, there might be a release candidate out for that. So I would keep an eye out for Ionic uh, announcement or from the native script side, hopefully some announcement to come out soon to give that a try. Language agnostic. This is a big one. So a lot of hybrid frameworks are either super uh, super picky about the language you use or they're not and this is going to this is going to start to uh, shape how this conversation is going how this how this talk is is set up because it's really 
I want to give you um, a little lay at the land in the hybrid frameworks, right? I want to show you a little bit, talk a little bit about React Native Flutter, Native Script, Ionic. And at the end, really want, hoping that you'll leave with an idea of which one you should or could use next. Language uh, preference is a is a big driver in that in that decision. So if you if you know React, obviously React Native, you would write in React. Flutter, you write in Dart. You can't. There's not another option. Native Script, you can write in. Type, uh, plain JavaScript, TypeScript, Angular, Vue, or even React. Uh, with Ionic, same same story as NativeScript. You can use JavaScript, TypeScript, Angular, Vue, React, all all the frameworks that you would choose to. So this will come into play in the uh, later in this talk. We'll kind of talk more about this slide. So which one should you use? I think first you got to ask yourself with each framework, right? So with React Native, with Flutter, with NativeScript, and with Ionic, how fast can I ship the app? Customers want apps fast. That's their concern. They don't care if you're using React, if you're using Ionic, if you're using Flutter. For the most part, they only care that their app with their requirements is shipped and in the app store as soon as possible. Now, as long as there's not uh, big performance hits, so obviously they would be concerned if or would care if you wrote an Ionic app and it couldn't do something that they wanted. All that aside, as long as it performs well and can do all the functions that they want, their big concern is just when. And so that's something we really have to think about. Um, and I think that's a, a big thing to think about. A lot of people nowadays are curious, you know, should I use Flutter? Should I use React? Should I use React Native, Native Script, right? There's always so much of a concern about the framework that you choose. For the most part, all these hybrid frameworks can all perform and do the same functions. Some make it easier than others in some ways. And then the other, uh, you know, and to the other side, some make other things easier than the others. So there's always going to be some give and take uh, when you're choosing which framework you want to use versus the other one. So this is kind of a little graph for me, for me to you. <laughs> so on the left is what do you know? And then on the right is what I think is the suggested framework for you to use. So if you only know JavaScript or TypeScript, you can really use whatever you want uh, because if you know JavaScript and TypeScript, you'll probably pick up uh, React or Angular evenly, right? So if you pick one or the other, you'd probably pick it up, pick them up in about the same time. Now I could have another slide here. If you knew Java, just JavaScript and TypeScript, technically I would, I could say that you should go native script because you can do native script with just JavaScript or TypeScript or Ionic, you can do with just JavaScript or TypeScript. I put React in there though, because if you're gonna work on a project and you're gonna be with a team or you're gonna be working with some people and you're gonna be writing a production app, I really think you should use TypeScript. So React, React Native with TypeScript or Native Script with Angular um, or Ionic with Angular any sort of TypeScript I would recommend. If you know Angular, then obviously you're gonna go, I think you should go either NativeScript or Ionic. My personal preference on that, I would go NativeScript. I think, I think NativeScript is better than Ionic, but there are reasons that you would choose Ionic over NativeScript. So don't worry that, um, I don't really even like to say that, you know, that one is better than the other. They all have pros and cons. You have to weigh those pros and cons. And it's really a question of speed, speed to market is the big concern. Um, so if you know React, I think you should go React Native. Uh, you'll be able to pick it up super fast. It's going to be easy for you to pick it up. Um, 
if you know Java or C sharp, you know any of those kind of that kind of server side language, Dart may be the way to go. Now you're probably going to know some JavaScript and Java if you're doing you know maybe you're not strictly back end right maybe you're doing a little bit of back end and some UI work some front end work. I think you'd still go Flutter because Dart is kind of like a mix of Java and JavaScript. It's going to throw all the recruiters for a loop. <laughs> um, so you'll be able to pick it up pretty quick, I think, whether you have no front end experience or you have some front end experience with the Java being your with Java being your primary language. And then if you have if you know none of them, so there's a little discussion we should have here. So if you know not, if you know none of these, right? You don't know JavaScript, you don't know TypeScript, you don't know. The question is then, what should you use? You don't get any benefit from previous knowledge, of course. So then it's really a question of the market, mm -hmm. and it, and kind of where you're at, where you're living at, what the market looks like, where you're living at, and stuff like that my honest opinion with the way the trend is going right now if you have time to learn something right so you don't know anything you have time to learn it right maybe you're still in school i i'm leaning towards flutter will be hotter i believe so if flutter keeps the trend then you'd be super glad in two years whenever or whenever you get out of school that you learned flutter it's hard to it's hard for me to say that being in um, being in this field um, because Google wrote Flutter, but they also did Java and Kotlin. So you have Google is a is a company that's um, famous for kind of building uh, intercompany wars, not in a negative sense, but they're, they often create um, some sort of teams that uh, compete against each other, right? And then when one wins or has the better product, the other ones get axed and get dropped. And there's usually not like a big, huge, oh, we're going to drop in blank. It's usually just kind of cut off and you're kind of left hanging. So it's hard for me because I feel like if we say go flutter, then you're really putting all of your eggs in one basket. Even though it is hotter right now, I don't I don't know if I would recommend that. Now, if you're if you're determined to go mobile, you go Flutter. You can always pivot, right? You can always pivot to native. Technically, you'd already have Java experience doing Dart, or pretty close to Java experience doing Dart. You could pivot and do Android development natively, or you could learn on the fly and go iOS. I would recommend picking one of the other ones though. Probably React Native, maybe NativeScript, maybe Ionic. Primarily because JavaScript's gonna be around, right? You can do you can do so many things with JavaScript or with React. With Dart you're or with Flutter, you're kind of you're kind of really stuck in a certain um, a certain path. If you do React Native, obviously you're going to learn React. You could go get a React job or a React Native job anywhere you wanted. With Native Script, assuming you did it with Angular or Vue, then you would already have. You know what I mean? You're learning the web framework and the mobile. You know, Native Script is its own thing. It's not. You're still going to write Vue. You're still going to write Angular. Right, that's the big thing is like your back end code is going to be the same as if you were on a Vue web project or an Angular web project. The UI is the only change with these with like React Native and with Native Script. So if you do that, you're going to be more marketable and you're going to have much uh, a lot more options available to you. So I would recommend React Native or Native Script, but I could see why someone might go Flutter. To me, it just feels like kind of taking a risk could pay off. You could you could hit gold, uh, and Flutter could 
you know, continue to grow and be the next, you know, a huge com competitor to native iOS and Android. It's totally possible. It just seems like a risk to me. And with a career, I, I'm not a fan of, of, of risking. So uh, now I'll open up for any questions anybody might have. All right, thank you for coming. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out. Uh, you can find me on Twitter. Um, that'd probably be the easiest way to find me at Tyler Blake Lou. Um, awesome, thank you, and talk to you later.